right up there with the Taurus wagon, the Aerostar was a vehicle that fascinated me as a child. As a huge fan of anything related to outer space, I thought of the Aerostar as kind of a space shuttle on wheels. If I had an Aerostar, I could go on adventures, maybe even save the galaxy. Of course I was only 10, so the fact it was only a minivan really never occurred to me. But after all, it was modeled after the space shuttle Enterprise. Somewhat ironically, the Aerostar story actually begins with Lee Iacocca. All the way back in the early 70s, Iacocca had tried to convince Ford management a smaller alternative to the full-size van would be a big hit. The first glimpse of Aerostar can be seen in this concept from 1972, particularly in the B-Pillar area. Ten years later, Ford began development of Aerostar. Ford's new Aero look was chosen early on as a way to differentiate Aerostar from Chrysler and GM rivals. As a kid, the Aerostar concept fascinated me, not the least of which because it seemed to share the same wheel design as my beloved Huffy Vortex. This mock-up interior predicted future technologies such as push-button transmissions and electronic climate controls. The Caravan was a traditional boxy shape. It was front-wheel drive and K-car based, and featured a roomy cabin. It was a massive hit and caught Ford and GM by surprise. The GM Astro Safari twins were rear-wheel drive and sacrificed a bit of interior space for towing and payload capacity. Ford engineers started with a clean sheet of paper and developed a unique chassis that was unibody but featured full-length frame rails. This configuration allowed for both greater interior space and substantial towing capacity. The look of Aerostar was quite radical for the time, so Ford featured average American families and their optional children in television and print ads. The optional rear audio entertainment system was one of the highlighted features in most wagon ads. But in the end, this was still a family life, and could provide little relief from teenage angst. Though rarely seen today, the Aerostar actually came in a variety of cargo configurations. The cargo variant was referred to as van, while the passenger models were listed as wagons. Fan exteriors usually featured deleted rear windows and larger truck-style mirrors, though windows and the standard mirrors were optional. Trim packages consisted of base model and XL. The XL model offered unexpected luxury options, such as an available leather steering wheel and plush high-back seats. As with the Taurus program, efforts were made to enhance ergonomics and seat comfort. Interior components, such as seats and door panels, were designed by computer, with fewer components to enhance durability. Aerodynamics played a role in the shape of Aerostar, which actually achieved a better drag coefficient than the Lincoln Mark 7, despite being 6 foot tall. Payload capacities of up to 2,000 pounds were achieved via heavy-duty coil springs at all four corners, and a rear solid axle suspension system similar to Ford's Panther platform. By the mid-80s, the cool parents were switching to minivans and droves, shunning the deeply uncool station wagons of the past. Long a familiar sight on American highways, it was clear the wagon's days were numbered. In only a few short years, the traditional family station wagon would lumber off into the sunset.
Nostalgia aside, it's easy to see why families of the 80s were won over by the additional room and practicality minivans offered. The dual captain chair configuration in particular offered great comfort, and the seating was more upright and chair-like than station wagons could offer. And of course, the obvious marketing connection to the shuttle Enterprise made Aerostar cool at a time when space exploration was still interesting to the general public. The Aerostar was built at Ford's St. Louis facility, which had been recently overhauled and modernized to handle additional capacity. A good thing is it wasn't long before Aerostar was in demand and becoming a familiar sight on American roads. Premium cassette audio systems, graphic equalizers, and electronic overhead consoles were but a few of the technology gadgets on offer. Initial wagon model trim levels consisted of standard, XL, and XLT, as was tradition in the Ford model truck ranges. A popular choice was the XLT, which included standard features such as an electronic instrument cluster, deluxe color key bumpers, and interval wipers. Regardless of the configuration chosen, Aerostar was proving surprisingly popular among a broad range of customers and already holding its own in the rapidly expanding minivan universe. A large part of the appeal was the trim dimensions. Aerostar was 41 inches shorter than Ford's full-size wagons. Both front and rear overhangs were also shorter, allowing for enhanced maneuverability. Extensive use of lightweight materials for fuel tanks, liftgate doors, and hoods also provided better fuel economy compared to previous family haulers. Two styles of two-tone paint were offered, the most common being the deluxe two-tone available on XL and XLT wagons. XLT models featured unique seat trim with deluxe multi-textured cloth and red accents. Rear-wheel drive and a frame rail reinforced unibody provided nearly 5,000 pounds of towing capacity, which was impressive for a compact vehicle. Rear seats could be arranged in a variety of configurations, but did require a bit of manual labor. This was typical of the time, however. A 2.3-liter four-cylinder was standard, though most opted for the optional V6, which was initially 2.8 liters, but upgraded to the Vulcan 3-liter after only a few months. Now equipped with as much as 145 blistering horsepower, the Aerostar could shuttle along at a decent pace at last. The addition of an extended model was one of the few major changes Aerostar would receive over the years. An Eddie Bauer trim level was introduced for the 88 model year to help lure more passenger car prospects. Nearly every optional feature on other models was standard on Eddie Bauer. Throughout the late 80s and early 90s, Aerostar remained popular due to its versatility and broad range of configurations. Ford's effort to reduce warranty claims also resulted in fewer major quality issues and kept Aerostar high on shoppers' lists. The sport trim level was added in the early 90s and featured unique paint treatment and a surprisingly aggressive ground effects package for a minivan. Composite headlamps and the addition of four-wheel drive were among the other few major revisions as the 90s progressed. The most notable interior upgrade was a completely new instrument panel for model year 92, which finally moved the automatic shift lever to the column.
After 12 years of faithful service, it was finally time for decommissioning. There would be replacements, but the galaxy just wasn't the same without Aerostar. As a child growing up in Houston during the 80s, space was everything. Trips to the Johnson Space Center were frequent and always fascinating. To my 10-year-old self, there was also nothing cooler than cars. And a car based on a spaceship, well, that was the stuff of dreams. surly bonds of earth to touch the face of God.